nothing says spring quite like masses of colourful flowers in garden beds and borders. And here at Lamley Gardens and Nursery in Central Victoria, you'll find exactly that. Magnificent gardens that bring visitors from all over the globe. And if you're planning your own garden at home, then you'll find plenty of inspiration here too. These mass planted areas are definitely the star of the show. What you're seeing are a lot of those bulbs like tulips and anemones that are planted in the autumn time that then pop up in late winter and spring and provide this spectacular colour. And what's really standing out to me is the way that they've all been colour blocked using complementary and contrasting colours. The effect is just beautiful. In early spring, this has to be one of the most stunning parts of the garden. Look at these drifts of poppies. The flowers are almost like crinkled silk. And because it's an annual, if you allow them to complete this cycle in the garden, they'll reseed naturally and pop up all over again. And in between all the poppies, you can see that this beautiful shrub is used. So this is a Forsythia, and this one in particular is called Golden Clusters. So it's a dwarf form that only gets to about 1.2 metres tall. And as you can see, it produces masses of these golden yellow flowers on bare branches. So a bit like today, it's like sunshine in the garden. Now this is an area of the garden that I could spend a lot of time in, the pear walk. So it's lined with ornamental pears, but this particular variety is called Valzam, which is one of the narrowest of all the varieties and forms a magnificent avenue. But there is lots to look forward to with spectacular autumn foliage colour. I've finished my self-guided tour. Now it's time to meet the creative genius behind this incredible garden, David Glenn. David, I've just had a wander around your magnificent garden. You must be so proud of what you've created. Well, I'm pretty happy with it at the moment, anyway. <laughs> well, that's a it start. It does give me nightmares sometimes to keep the show going, but um, I think it's pretty good at the moment. Tell me a little bit about the climate that you're working with here. Well, we, we get minus six, minus eight in the winter. Oh, wow. Because we're, we're 450 metres up. And we also get 45 in the summer. Uh, so you can see we have to have plants that will not only s struggle through it, yeah. but look like they enjoy it. Because if somebody thinks it's going to wilt at 47, it's going to be me, not my garden. <laughs> I love that philosophy. Do you find it challenging with a garden of this size to make it look good through every season? You no, know, it's quite easy. There are plants that want to flower in the winter, want to flower in the spring, want to flower in the summer. It's just, say, the spring flowering bulbs, we only grow under perennials that start to grow late spring. The problem is to not be too fussy. I, I tend to want to grow every single plant I can. There's some parts of the garden you'll see lots of fussiness there. My wife hates that. Speaking of your wife, yeah. It really is a place here where art meets garden. I mean, she's a very talented artist. Yeah, she is. She's a brilliant artist. And that's how we met. I don't know if you know that. No, we, tell me the story. We were, we, I had a, my nursery in the Dandenongs, and we used to grow perennials in the field, three-acre field just full of flowers. She came down to the field to get flowers to paint. And this absolutely gorgeous woman comes down there, and I just went, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm never letting her go. <laughs> So this is the dry garden that this we're standing garden, yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. So you barely water this area? Well, some years, if it's a good year, we, I mean, last year we watered it once. It was a, but it was a mild summer. But the most we ever watered is four times a year. Wow. So the plants have to cope with that sort of regime. Yeah, well, it's certainly clever plant selection. Yeah, well, you, they select themselves because they're not happy, they die. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I think that's that quite evolution. <laughs> Now, you have been a plantsman, a gardener, a nurseryman for decades. I, I gather you've learned a, a thing or two about gardening in that time. <laughs> yeah, but not enough. <laughs> <laughs> There's still more to learn. There's still more to learn, yeah. I, I was trying to explain, I've got an, uh, you know, apprentice gardeners, and I say, you know, I can get any number of good 
plumbers, electricians. I said, but you, you can count on the number of really skilled gardeners on the fingers of one hand, because gardening is much more difficult. And it's the most underestimated skill there is. Underestimated. Yeah, I believe that. You know? yeah. So, um, yeah, and so it takes a lifetime to really learn how to do it. And then you die, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> and become compost. <laughs> <laughs> no, not compost. <laughs> now I'm about to meet his beautiful wife, Chris, who's an artist with her own creative flair. Chris, your paintings are just beautiful. How much are you inspired by your surroundings here? Um, I think the garden here is really probably my main inspiration. Well, nature. But um, it's really good in a way to be respectful and remember that this is a live thing and then try and capture that beauty and that um, energy. It's a beautiful... Um, thing being a painter. Uh, this is my 57th year. Oh, wow. And actually designing a garden is very like a painting. David was telling us the story about how you met. It was just <laughs> gorgeous. He was never letting you go, I can tell you, the way he was telling us. <laughs> it was fantastic. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so you've created this beautiful lifelong partnership yeah. between art and garden. Yeah. Well, when we came here, it was really 40 acres of weed and the house wasn't in too good a sort of nick. <laughs> um, so it's been a 30-year journey to get to this now. David's always saying, oh, you know, you do a painting and it's finished, but a garden's never finished and it's constantly changing. And that, that took me a long time to get my head around. You know, I was like, oh, I've got that garden bed looking beautiful, but hey, <laughs> nature's not going to listen, you know? It's, no. It's an, a, a living thing. It will change. Well, I tell you what, this has been just such a beautiful visit for me mm. to see an incredible garden and how it inspires you with your art. So thank you so much for having us here. You're very welcome. It's really lovely to share this garden. Wear bigger shoes and smaller smiles and we'll be so tall. And as we grow, now it's my turn to be inspired by all the colour that we've seen in the gardens. So I've got this great little project for you. It's a little bit quirky to help you to inject colour into your garden. It's called the Topsy Turvy Tower of Flowers. Start by getting your hands on a Rio bar like this. So this one was about 1.8 metres tall and I've already hammered it into the ground about 300 mil just till it's nice and stable. I've also got my hands on a collection of terracotta pots here. So mostly the same size, about 27 centimetres. But I've also got a bigger pot, which I'm going to use to form the base. So it all begins by feeding the Rio bar through the drainage hole in the bottom. Because I want these topsy-turvy pots to really flourish, I'm using both a potting mix and a fertiliser in Scott's Performance Naturals range. Now, it was originally designed for edibles, but it's fantastic to use on flowers too. Use this potting mix and you will see the difference in the growth and performance of your plants because they'll be thriving in a mix of natural ingredients. Things like blood and bone, feather meal, seaweed, chicken manure and Nature Zen, which is a unique natural source of nitrogen that promotes vigorous growth. So I think it works best to plant out each pot as you go, but you might just need to massage some of those plants out of the way as you're building your tower. Now you can see the pots are placed on an angle like this, and we'll place them on different angles, so you can see why it's called a topsy-turvy tower. We've seen lots of beautiful bulbs here, so I'm continuing the theme with this potted display, only I'm using bulbs that flower through the warmer months. So these are beautiful Asiatic lilies here, and then at the front to cover the bare legs of the lilies, I'm using these beautiful nemesias. So they'll flower from spring right through autumn. Now doesn't that look topsy-turvy? 
for a beautiful long lasting display of flowers you can just continue to feed through the growing season with performance naturals all purpose organic based fertilizer which is full of nothing but natural goodness so you're not only feeding the plants but the soil too I now know why people from all over the globe want to visit this garden. It's a benchmark in sustainability. It's beautiful and inspiring. I tell you what, it's definitely one for the bucket list.